Hello, audience. It's 9-9-2023. And today, I hope you guys stick with me. I'm trying a new format here. And we're going to show clips to show what I'm actually talking about. We're not just talking, necessarily. So today, and let me know if this is something that you liked. Today we are going to go over a theory that I have, and then we are going to actually figure out if it's wrong, if there's something actually wrong about it. And that's how all theories should work, is that you should be able to falsifiable. Therefore, it has to be able to be proven wrong. If there's no possible way that it has a potential to be proven wrong, then it is not a theory. It is just a dream. Not a theory at all. So, so this is a bearded dragon brain. This red spot is actually the forebrain. It's actually where memories are stored. Now, understanding that DNA holds memory, so bearded dragons are born with the memory and ability to blackbeard. And this would be held in the forebrain. DNA has 100% proven to be a memory. So therefore this, so this might actually correlate to the, the size of the forebrain might correlate to the size of an individual's territory. And that makes a lot of sense. So I started looking into sea turtles. And it is proven that baby sea turtles have a bigger brain per body than the adults or basically any other one. And they're super adorable. But here's the kicker here is that that's necessity. We have DNA in our memory, and so their forebrains should automatically be bigger than a normal baby might have a forebrain so that they can actually get to the ocean and actually m figure out where they need to go on their own. So their DNA is holding memory. We have this right here. This is a really good map. This is the oral stock. This is what they smell and other sensors that come from the front of their from the front of their heads. And then as this shifts backwards, we get a forebrain. And this is where your memory and stuff should be stored. And then you have the optic tantum of which is what takes the eyes and takes the sensories and actually tells the brain what those sensories actually mean. And so that's where their magnetic field and stuff sensor would probably be as well to tell that. And then you have the cerebral and this controls their muscles. And then you have the Mandela this down here has to be the optic nerve. So we look at these four turtles. This is a leatherback, the biggest sea turtle in the world. His brain looks quite a big difference. And we can see this is the log head. The reason why I bring up the log head instead of the green sea turtle is because the log head is the one of the biggest territories of any turtle. So the leatherback actually has the biggest territory. But we look at the brain, and this would automatically make you assume that, that the theory is completely wrong. The leatherback's forebrain is quite a big difference than the loggerhead forebrain. So you would say that this theory doesn't really make a lot of sense. Well, one thing we might actually look at here, too, is the fact that this is actually more linear than this throughout the whole thing. 
So this shows that there should be more connection. If this animal brain was bigger, it might actually have the capacity for empathy. But that's for another time. So this is the actual territory of the leatherback sea turtle. And this is really interesting because another thing that we can compare this to is ocean current. Everywhere they go, they have some type of current to ride. This is fascinating to me. And so what would a normal turtle habitat be? Closer to the shores is what they talk about. Their habitats are more up and down the coasts in the shallows while the leatherbacks are all over the place this is what a regular sea turtle is going to see this is why the optic nerves are bigger their their brains are bigger because they have possibly they have more things to see with all this color all the rocks Everything that you would use to say, this is the direction I need to go. And this is absolutely gorgeous. Just, I mean, we've all been underwater in some point in time. Understanding up and down and left and right and north and south actually takes less brain power than the optic nerves do. So what we see is actually taking more of our brain power where knowing where up and down is. So let's see what a leatherback's going to see most of the time. This. As they ride the currents, as they get into the deeper oceans, there's not as much stuff to actually see and map. So they have to use more basic techniques instead of just sight. They're going to literally see, this is comparing the loggerhead here is on your right. And on your left is the leatherback. The leatherback's much bigger. We have this diamond plate on the back of the head. These, these spots look quite a big difference because they do. Going back to this one, we look at the eyes. The eyes are different. And that would make sense that they don't use as much optic nerve because it's darker and there's not as many things to map their territory with. So they would want a, I don't know what this is at the top. If you're a sea turtle expert, I would love to have you on and talk about this. What's this thing on the top of the actual leatherback head? We know they ride the waves, man. The waves. So Pixar got it right, dude. They're probably tubular. They might be a little bit more emotional than the other actual reptiles. And they might actually be just surfing the waves. Not really thinking that deeply. Just more emotional. That's an actual legitimate theory. Now, audience, tell me if that was actually enjoyable to, to kind of think of that difference. Because when we think of the human brain, we actually see that the human brain has actually been shrinking since, and we're not getting dumber. But it's that we don't need as much of the actual internal structures in the brain like we used to. So what people would call the reptile brain. I hate that term. But that part of our brain has been shrinking. We have massive territory. But we drive cars. We all know we don't really think a lot when we drive cars. Uh, it's one of those things. So that's a really cool thing is that we have as massive territory more than we've ever had in our entire existence as a species. And then our brains are actually shrinking. But we're not traveling. We're not having to use as much brain power and sight. Whereas, you know, I'm an old country boy. 
you know, you see that fork in the road, you know, go to the side with the tree that's down and Mr. You know, blah, blah's yard. And, you know, you make a left defense with the cow and that, you know, that would require us to use more brain power to say that than to look up on Google and go, okay. But yet that doesn't actually mean we're dumber. So it's really a fascinating thing. So we've changed the theory. It's more about functionality and how the brain is used than it is just the, the basic stuff there. So since we've used their stuff, let's go through and actually find the stuff that they say will be helpful to protect sea turtles. Let's reduce ocean trash. Keep your distance from sea turtles. Protect sea turtle habitats. So keep the beaches clean. After a day at the beach, remove recreational beach equipment. Report marine life in distress. These are all things that we need to keep in mind to keep the sea turtles alive. Because we have so much left to learn from them. Hey, thank you all, and you guys have a good night.